baby? This week on Thug Notes, we jacking in with Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. It's the year 2040 and everything fucking sucks. I'm talking famine, poverty, an energy crisis up the ass, wars. I can go on, player. To escape this whacked out world, everybody live in a VR game called the Oasis. You can do anything up in here. Get your learn on, hustle at a job, buy stuff, swing and bang, whatever. Everyone up on that daily grind when the creator of the Oasis, a 10-figure baller named James Halliday, takes that long dirt nap and drops a video message on all the players. Brothers say he hid an Easter egg in the Oasis, and the first cat that nabs three keys that unlocks it gets all his fat stacks. Woo! Money! For the next five years, homies busting ass trying to find them keys and get on a big ass scoreboard. These peeps called Gunters, and they wild about the 80s and everything holiday. Ain't nobody find shit till our 18 year old narrator Wade step up and crack the first clue. Woo! See, Wade come from the hood, so he's straight obsessed with getting holidays cash monies. One day, Wade chilling in Latin class when he recognized the first key might be on this here school planet. So homeboy teleport to the spot, shakes off some traps, wrecks shop at a mini game, and hell yeah, he get that key. He try to book it to the next spot when he runs into a famous honey named Artemis, who Wade been hot for since his balls dropped. Oh. Turns out she been trying to beat that mini game for weeks, but just can't hack it. Wade give her a tip on a low and swings over to the next clue. Dude beasts through another mini game like a G and opens up the first gate where he gotta play Matthew Broderick in that 80s movie War Games. That's my shit. After he done with that mess, he gets the next clue. Soon enough, Wade got some company on that scoreboard. Artemis, his homeboy H, and two brothers named Dido and Shoto are on the come up. Some shysters from a big ass corporation called IOI hmm. start blowing up Wade's inbox saying they want to meet him. These haters are called Sixers, and the only thing on their mind is making bank off the Oasis. Wade decides he want to meet the top dog, Sorrento, who offers Wade some mad grants to start playing for their team. When Wade say, nah, bruh, I'm straight, Sorrento say they know where he live and they're gonna blow it to hell. Since Wade's real body is in his hideout, he just shake that hater off. Then boom, his auntie's trailer go up in smoke and a bunch of innocents gets murked. Scared as hell, Wade holler at his homies and when he tell them what went down, they all wig out. So Wade skips town and lays low by taking a new name. While he trying to crack the next clue, the Sixers try to ice him, and he gets his woo on with Artemis. But brother moving a little too fast, so Artemis gotta shut him down. Rookie move, Wade. A couple of months go by, and Wade's doing what I call the post-breakup hustle. Work out, stay busy, and buy sex, dog. What else do you need? He ain't no closer to finding the second key, when out of nowhere, Artemis got it. With a little help from H, Wade connects the dots and books it to a planet where he go hard at a game of Pac-Man and wins. A quarter. The hell is this shit? Boy thinks this is a little Easter egg, so he pockets it. Wade slides over to another planet, takes down a game, and get that second key. It's all good till he get word that the Sixers ghosted Dido in real life. Man, that ain't good, yo. Soon he boosts the third key and rolls over to the spot where the Easter egg gonna be. But oh shit, a whole gang of Sixers is posted up right outside the castle. Hmm. So he comes up with the plan. After getting got by the police, Wade hacks into the IOI to boost some scandalous evidence, mess with their shield, and then blows that joint. He hit up Artemis, Shoto, and H, telling them to bail, cause the IOI is looking to off him in the real world. They all meet in the chat room and conversate about how they're gonna take down the Sixers. They need all the hoods in the Oasis to crew up with them in this fight, so Wade send out a message to everybody, telling them when they're gonna throw down. While they plotting, Holiday's partner Morrow shows up in the chat room and say he been creeping on them. He sent everybody some swanky planes to haul them to his crib. When they ready to bang out, the shield fails and a bunch of gunters and sixes start scrapping. 
The Sixers drop a bomb, and boom! Everybody dies. Except Wade, remember that quarter he got? Turns out it was an extra life. So he keeps hustling. He wrecks another game and plays King Arthur in that movie with the coconuts. After busting through some other challenges, he finally gets the Easter egg. Holiday's character shows up and say, yo, reality can be raw as hell, but it's the only place you can find happiness, cause reality is real. You feel me? Sorrento gets thrown in the clink, and Wade gonna share his fat check with his homies. Then Wade and Artemis hook up in the real world and finally kiss. Aw, oh, yeah. If there's one thing this book always going on about, it's escaping from the horrible bullshit in your life. I mean, everybody's lives are so damn shitty that they all hold up inside a video game. The game don't just give them a different world, but one that let people shine and live life on the easy. It ain't just people getting their marbles off by losing themselves in another world, but also by losing themselves in the past. Everybody in this book always geeked up about the 80s and shit. From Pac-Man and a young Matty B, nah, not that one, to Monty Python, but no run DMC. Man, that's some bullshit. If your head always living in the past, how you gonna create new ideas, man? How you supposed to fully live? Truth is, sometimes by trying to escape one trap, people actually end up creating another one. I'd come to see my rig for what it was, an elaborate contraption for deceiving my senses, to allow me to live in a world that didn't exist. Each component of my rig was a bar in a cell where I had willingly imprisoned myself. In real life, I was nothing but an antisocial hermit. I was just another sad, lost, lonely soul wasting his life on a glorified video game. So is this kind of future technology banging or busted? Well, on the one hand, the Oasis players can get all the dank knowledge they want. I'm talking free information, free schooling, and the ability to conversate with homies all over the world. But on the other hand, if you don't check yourself, you can end up isolating yourself from any meaningful connections. So is the Oasis a utopia or a dystopia? Well, to be real, that answer ain't so easy. The Oasis give post struggling folks access to education and jobs since there ain't none on the outside, but that also means that they're ignoring all the mess happening around them in the real world, which only makes that reality rock to sh**. It's like there's a utopia within a dystopia. You feel me? In the real world, Wade ain't got no friends, no Benjamins, and no respect. But in the Oasis, dude got a solid rep, a nice cash flow, and a loyal crew. I mean, just check this. One sec, Wade jabbering about how horrible shit is. Things used to be awesome, but now they're kind of terrifying. Human civilization is in decline. Some people even say it's collapsing. Then he started talking up his life like it's all Titan shit. Luckily, I had access to the Oasis, which was like having an escape hatch into a better reality. It was my playground and my preschool, a magical place where anything was possible. The Oasis is the setting of all my happiest childhood memories. So is escape the answer to living in a jacked up world? Is it better to kick back and live a decent life in a fake world or be on a struggle in reality? Maybe we should spend time caring for our reality and make it the place to be rather than just giving up and piecing out to somewhere else. Or maybe f it. What's reality anyway? I'm going wherever they got the dankest libraries. Peace, y'all. Yo, thanks for kicking it with me. And if you're looking to build a fly website to show off your skills, start an online business, or just share your ideas and creations, head on over to squarespace.com slash thugnotes. Squarespace has got easy to use tools for you to quickly and easily make the website you want. And they've got tons of award-winning fly templates to help you get started. You don't need to know coding or anything. And they're giving all you well-read ballers 10% off your first order when you use the offer code THUGNOTES. If that ain't good enough, Squarespace is hooking y'all up with a free 14-day trial so you can see for yourself just how easy it is. So go to squarespace.com slash thugnotes or use the link in the description below to sign up today. And you'll get a free 14-day trial to test it out. Be sure to use the offer code THUGNOTES to get 10% off your order. Thanks to Squarespace for being a homie and sponsoring this video. And we've got lots more videos on the way. So go to our channel page, and if you haven't